on our political analyst, of course, joining us in studio to unpack it for us. Uh, Karima, of course, they say that they take the state of capture report in a very serious light and that they do believe a judicial commission of inquiry should be set up, but not in the way recommended by Tuli Madansela. What do you make of it? I think uh, Gwedem and Tash has the incredibly difficult task of tap dancing around the fact that the ANC is a deeply divided organization from the top six right down to branches. Uh, the statement is a reflection of the uh, extent of that divisions. So for example, the concession by the Zuma faction within the NWC um, that there will be a meeting with the veterans when initially there was a dismissal um, you know, of this initiative uh, must be read as um, a victory for those who are trying to open other fronts. The push around um, trying to muddy the waters around um, what you can and can't do with how the public protect uh, uh, when it was Tuli Madonsela tried to box in and ring fence. Uh, the appointment of um, a judge gives you an idea that the Zuma faction, for example, are going to um, contest um, you know, the, uh, the issues around whether the president has the prerogative in the final analysis, despite the fact that uh, Tuli Madonsela tried to very cleverly almost uh, give him no room in which to maneuver. One name, uh, uh, one submission. Um, so what what you're seeing at the moment are the two factions rent down the middle, um, obviously playing a very um, tactical game with each other because the organization is unable to cohere. Um, and I think that um, Gwede Mantasha's um, uh, uh, response to whether the NWC discussed whether the Hawks is investigating him, and of course the Treasurer General Zweli Mkize um, and, and the Finance Minister again, um, he's um, utter dismissal of that gives you an idea that as the subject of um, the supposed investigation, if there were to be one, um, makes it almost um, incredibly hard for him to speak as someone who represents the entire organization. Um, so a very deeply divided ANC NWC, Gwede Mantash having to tap dance around those divisions trying to um, speak to the public and not just ANC members because you have to read the statement as code what ANC members understand, what the public understands because the two are not necessarily the same thing. Now, for somebody watching at home, you know, obviously trying to listen very carefully to what Guerra Mantasha is doing, as you say, him tap dancing to play to the public, but also, you know, bring in line the pro-Zuma people at the NWC. For them, the ANC is still not taking the calls for President Jacob Zuma's uh, mm -hmm. resignation seriously, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is the, the kernel of the, of the issue here. In the past, before the municipal elections, which um, resulted in the ANC losing uh, all the key metros, it was a sure thing that the voters were behind the ANC. There, there was a declining uh, um, you know, support, but they were solid. That is simply not the case. All the indicators for 2019, um, the trajectory for the ANC going forward uh, looks bleak under this current administration because it is it has been punished at the polls already. So whatever messaging comes from the ANC has to speak to the eye on the big prize, which is 2019. And then of course, the reason why that decline is happening. So in my view, for every day that the ANC is seen to not, and remember politics is as much about perception as it is about power. If the perception is there that the ANC is deaf to the complaints of the electorate around the governance of President Zuma's administration, it risks everything. It risks the big prize losing power. Um, on the other hand, President Zuma is a big tree to uproot in the African National Congress. And there it's a war of attrition between the factions. No faction um, dominant enough to impose its will. And hence, Gwede Mantash trying to deftly and adroitly, you know, maneuver his way. So you've got to read the code um, and look at uh, what the tactics are that different people are employing. What can be said, Shahan, is that this is the biggest risk going forward for the African National Congress. President Zuma has become too expensive if you use the test of the municipal election outcome. The trajectory there says, 
hang on to this man, it's the easiest route, the shortest route to losing complete grip on power in the country. And that is what the ANC is constantly weighing. All the factions are constantly looking at how they continue to hold their grip. The stakes couldn't be higher. Now, let's talk about this meeting with the veterans. It's come after a long, uh, you know, week or two of discontent from the veterans themselves. What's interesting is that the NEC is not going to meet. They will be there, but not by themselves. They have the NWC members who are obviously pro-Zuma as well there to back them up when they meet these ANC veterans. The NWC is not united, uh, Shahan. Um, I'm sitting in front of me looking at the list. It's made up of the six official and officials and 20 members. Uh, Jeff Khadebe, Naledi Pando, Lindy Wezulu, Patabili Dlamini, uh, uh, Bladen Zimande, Aaron Mutsualedi, uh, people like Derek Hanakum. So you can see the divisions, as I've said. Um, the NWC as a structure, first of all, has no constitutional powers. So it can't take decisions. Um, it is not in a position to impose anything. So that is why this statement is so important because it is the organization trying to get a semblance of coherence, but it's unable to do so because it's rent down the middle. Um, so that's the first thing. The NEC, as opposed to the NWC, is the highest decision-making body between conferences. It can actually take real decisions in constitutional terms for the ANC. So it's important to understand that. Um, it's also important to note that um, in the past NWC, there was um, very harsh criticism of some of the ANC NEC members that have um, aligned themselves with uh, Finance Minister Praveen Gordon. But because of the divisions among the top six themselves, so in my view, you have Gwede Mantash, Zuelim Kize, and uh, uh, um, uh, Deputy President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa uh, kind of almost beginning to almost by default come together. And you have um, Jesse Duarte, the President, uh, uh, Jacob Zuma, and of course the, the Chair, uh, Bale Gambete, almost beginning to form another kind of poll. So you have the top six divided. You have this committee of extra 20 people with no constitutional powers equally divided. And then, of course, you go through to the branches. Um, the veterans, many of them in the, in the NEC, but also remember uh, Thabo Mbeki, all former presidents have the automatic right to be at the NEC meeting, but they need to be invited. The current NEC needs to ask them to come there. So a big concession to meeting the veterans, um, no matter which structure, but the key is to distinguish the powers of the NWC from that of the NEC. The NWC has no um, ability to make decisions on behalf of the organization, Shah. Let's talk about the divisions. I know that Greta Matasha says the party is working tirelessly to try to bridge the divide, which it's been trying to do for years now. I remember we were at the Mango in Mangaung and we were discussing the exact same thing there. But uh, if you hear what uh, Bladen Zamande said this weekend, it made me worry, listen to him, where he said, we know things about state capture, which we can't say publicly because it will be so explosive. Yes. Now, this is a division that seems to be boiling. And yes. when do we see it boil over? You see, that is why I said it's really important to understand the um, complexities. Um, the ANC is um, made up of um, many different uh, forces. It's a multi-class, multi-alliance uh, organization. Um, and the divisions used to be down policy positions. So you would have the traditional left, you had the nationalists. With the advent of the sins of incumbency with state power and the ability to access huge sums of money through state-owned enterprises, the game changed. The divisions are now driven around patronage networks, as we see as the State of Capture report actually goes to point out in very granular detail. So the divisions are only going to become uh, more um, sharp as we go uh, uh, you know, forward. President Jacob Zuma is not able to unite the party. Um, and so this idea that when they, for example, in parliament as a caucus, um, don't vote with the DA, that the ANC must then be seen collectively as one thing is, is, is a 
is a very superficial understanding. We know that there's a pitch battle going on in that caucus itself. If you look at the way the Committee on uh, Communications have, uh, for example, been reigning in uh, the pro Zuma faction around the SABC, you can see that people are tactically choosing at which point to open what front. Um, so it's really important to not have a mechanical um, appreciation. Um, it's a very complex organization, very, very divided. And of course, we must remember that the ANC chooses a new president next year. There's an elective conference. Traditionally, a very bloody, very messy contestation. Um, and what you are seeing here is a president with a sell by date on his back, but desperate to hold on to a patronage network through a series of alternatives when he no longer can serve as president of the country. Um, and in most cases, the ANC kind of follows suit to change as president. So the, the key here is that um, the prize is still 2019. If the ANC's future leaders want to continue to rule this country, uh, Jacob Zuma is not the route to go. The electorate has in large numbers. This is the middle classes, the working poor, the urban poor have spoken. Uh, we saw Gwede Mantash um, trying to have a dig at the EFF, mm. um, you know, speaking to the question of the EFF's um, kind of double speak around issues of race and national cohesion. So on the one hand, the EFF um, says South Africa belongs to all of the, it, and on the other hand, the EFF is kind of anti-white. Again, the ANC trying to lift its head up the narrow parapet of internal politics, trying to speak to the electorate, trying to speak to South Africa at large, and then ducking again and then going straight for the jugular speaking to the branch members. A very difficult tap dance to do. Um, of course, like I said, the risk increases by the day. As the um, ANC hurtles towards 2017, uh, 2019 looms large. And of course, who is going to go down uh, in history mm -hmm. as the leadership that costs Africa's oldest liberation movement, um, its grip on power, is going to be the key question. Now, very lastly, as you said, it is really about perception. And the truth is, South Africans are not stupid here. I mean, what do you think goes through their mind and what are the implications for the party having watched a press conference like this where they try to toe the line, where Greta Montasha does the tap dancing, as you say? I think it's so instructive to recast for listeners and viewers who listen to um, former constitutional court judge uh, Zak Yaqub, uh, who spoke at the People's Assembly. He was emphatic about the fact that if we continue, and he was speaking to South Africans at large, he said he was a member of the ANC. He's no longer a member of the ANC. And he said one of the reasons he can no longer be a member of the ANC is because the ANC's constitution requires its members to be honest. And in his estimation, he believed that most current NEC members fail that very basic constitutional test set by the ANC itself. He said that they're not about removing President Zuma. They are about changing the way in which the body politic is constituted. And I supp suppose all the political parties are confronted with that challenge because it's not just the ANC that suffers from the sins of incumbency. If you, for example, look at party political funding in South Africa, no political party is prepared to tell us who gets, uh, where they get their money from. And capture begins right there. So to go back to former uh, constitutional court judge uh, uh, Yakub, if the body politic in South Africa doesn't give, the voters, like you say, are not stupid, Shahan, they will speak. Um, you have the potential for vacuum politics, you have the potential for populism to emerge, like Julius Malema's constantly trying to tap that vein of populism, trying to appeal to people who are desperately poor, who are unemployed. Um, we are one of the most unequal societies in the world. So all politicians trying to play to that. Historically, the ANC has had to um, take all of society into consideration, which accounts for its approach to a mixed economy and so on. But it has no longer got that moral authority. And as Justice Yacoub um, uh, explained, voters will vote with their feet. We've had that demonstration in the municipal elections. All right, thank you very much for the analysis. Appreciate it. That was political analyst Karima Brown. Karima